name is Aaron Siegel, and I'm the Executive Director of Experiments in Opera, and I'm really glad to have my friend and colleague here. And I'm Jason Cady, uh, Co-Artistic Director of Experiments in Opera, uh, along with uh, Kamala Shankaram. We're just thrilled to see you all. This is our first show back after the pandemic, and it's really meaningful to have it be this um, piece, which Mallory and I have been working on for several years, and which was, this concert was supposed to happen in June of 2020, and probably you hear that over and over again this fall, um, but it doesn't make it any different in terms of the meaningfulness of actually being able to perform and share this piece with audiences, uh, with you all especially. And also just to kick off our um, 10th anniversary season as a company, Experiments in Opera, we're really thrilled to be working with Mallory, with um, Restless NYC, and just with these amazing musicians up here. So we're so grateful to have you here to celebrate and to witness this moment. And then, coming up in March, uh, we will be releasing a 10-part video opera called Everything for Dawn, and it'll be airing on uh, WNET. So, so keep your eyes peeled for that, and we hope you enjoy the show. Holiday, guest rooms and guest soaps and guest towels with embroidery. 
embroidery. At the same time, Beatrice wanted to be alone without the police matron observing her state of shock. She wanted to think, but her head kept chiming with the doorbell. My pigeon And she kept seeing the pigeon set free, flying to the tallest tree, and there was a sensation in her head as of whirring springs, like the sound inside a clock after it has struck the hour. She was relieved when Miss Hendry went next door. For a moment, she stood free. She absorbed the news. Godfrey, dead. How did they know it was him? Someone seeing him. Oh, that looks like Godfrey Rainbird. You know, the clerk in the tourist office. What proof had they? These things had to be proved, and who had proved that the center of the earth was fire? Somewhere, everywhere, there was a terrible deception. I'm Miss Hendry. May I come in? Are you Mrs. Rainbird? Mrs. Godfrey Rainbird, do you mind if I come in? Well, it's late. I was in bed. There has been an accident. Have you good neighbors? The Baldwins. I'll ask if they'll keep an eye on the children while I take you to Mr. Rainbird. Or is there anyone else you'd rather call?
sending rainbird calling. Hello, is that Mrs. Rainbird? Beatrice, I got your cable. You know how I feel for you, Lindley. Yes, how clear your voice is. I'm taking the plane today. The plane, the plane, it leaves at noon. You're ahead of us. Heart free dead. I'll be there for his funeral. I'm emigrating, be coming out for good. God free was all I had.
children are terribly confused but so excited. And the phone's been ringing and ringing since the news came out about you. It's a Forget about it. Forget it? How could we ever forget it? You've been dead. Figuratively speaking. Dead? You mean dead? Pronounced dead. Pronounced dead. Haven't you heard what I've been saying, Godfrey? your shoes, the suit, yes, the coat as well as the trousers, the whole suit, isn't it awful, but you're here again, everything was so, so changed, yes, changed. Buried alive, all men 
amount of earth pressed upon the living body into mouth, ears, eyes, nose, over flesh, arms, legs, pressing until a man's chest, unable to rise in breathing, caves in becomes a cavern of darkness where he lies spinning yet immobile like a distantly viewed star the earth does not say to itself it is all Once a man internalized itself to the weight of earth, pressing down, down upon the other dead. Passing through the dead as through doorways, forever pressing towards the fire, the true nest and depths of the earth. Mr. Rainbird. Everyone now will be too far away. Nonsense. This sort of thing happens every day. Always some poor devil thinking he's dead or about to die. That's worse, you know. For if you know you're gonna die, you have to think about it. But with you, why you never knew a thing, it was instantaneous. Instantaneous. Everything takes so much more time than people admit. Dying takes time. Living takes more time than is allotted to it. And with birth, much longer than nine months. Yes, you were lucky, I'll tell you that. A year ago we had a woman with only six months to live. They believe in letting them know they're balanced enough. You have to be balanced. Balanced, the thought of death would unbalance anyone. Yes, but we tell those people whom life does not unbalance. 
silence. Oh. This woman was calm. She said she'd be able to plan her six months like a budget for the things she wanted to do. Tidy her business affairs, perhaps go on a world tour. Did she go on a world tour? No, but it would be hard to find someone happier than she was. She didn't want to die. She wept when they told her, but she recovered and had a wonderful six months. People recover from anything. to the woman Well, six months later they said they'd made a mistake that she'd live as long as anybody might expect to And you know what she did? At first she refused to believe it She was like a spoiled child angrily disappointed and depressed Her plans had gone awry The extra delight and anguish went from her life People didn't bother about her anymore She lost the only thing that made her life She was dead. Suicide. She couldn't face the idea of living. Oh. I don't know whether I should have told you that. But after all, you're a married man with children. A married man with children. He dies a married man with children. He is indiscreet, a married man with children. He is heroic, a married man with children. because she was already hiding from him, planning to tell lies. She had never dreamed of deceiving him until now. His death was still with her. She did not know how to accommodate it. She had shaped her heart to fit her bereavement as a piece of metal is twisted in heat. She hated the children for not understanding what had happened to their father, too sharp and shrewd in their unanswerable questions. She hated Godfrey for choosing to walk part of the way home that night, for so disrupting everything, for the preparations and the rituals of his death that could never be forgotten. For Lindley's visit, what was to be done with her? How would she feel when she received the cable that Godfrey was alive? Finally, she hated herself for hating everyone else for feeling and knowing that a frightening change had invaded their world. Change is inevitable, the only known security, a standing place as firm as the earth in its imperceptible spinning. Yet the change from death to life 
life defied the laws of gravity. She must be calm, she told herself. Never go back. No, of course not. I've come to stay too. My footing. I must tread carefully. I must tread carefully to make sure no one usurps my position. No one usurps my position. Hold fast to my wife and children and house and garden and lawn and tools. Life following the example I set for it will once again flow into me. Keeping death out is to build walls, walls everywhere. I am on an unfamiliar path that has, that not, has been not been poured yet. I have laid it with my own hands in my own time. Over me, don't joke about it. 
country is more favorable than any other for his recovery. A pleasant climate, healthy outdoor life, he gets a good wage, we've plenty to eat, we've our own home, what more could we want? What more? All the same, what he's been through doesn't seem to fit in with anything here. I mean, the sky is so blue. We're people here, you know, just as you are people over there. It's no use trying to compare your country and mine by weighing the burden of suffering with the verdict that the heavier burden gives superiority. No, I didn't tortured and the dead in other countries. I mean that everything here caters to you if you live like everyone else. But what if you're not like that? What if you don't like scenery? You'll get 
Just like it, and that's all. And decide not to spend your weekends and your holidays worshiping it. And what if you don't want a house with a garden? What if you don't mind an apartment on the 15th floor? You have to fit in here, Lindley. Take Godfrey, he's fitted in. Then there's the Fellowship Society. He was coming from it when he was killed. Killed. If there's anything I can do, anything at all, Mr. Rainbird, do come in. It's good to see you back. Yes, fair is fair. Yes, what I mean to say is yes, that you won't think me unfair yes, or victimizing if I explain that the department yes, is worried. It's like this, Mr. Rainbird. We've taken advice on this. In the interests of the tourist business, the country as a whole, not to mention our overseas exchange, we've taken advice. In those interests, Godfrey, especially in the wider public interest and that of the tourist image, ours is a public service. If a man disgraces himself, is brought before the court, goes to prison, we can't continue to employ him. Mind you, it's not that we don't believe in the rehabilitation of the criminal, it's just that there are other organizations more willing and able to cope with that. We have to remember that our image is a public image. Misunderstand me. You're a fine, clean living young man. You've adapted.
adapted yourself well to this country. The fact is, what happened last week was a terrible thing. I sent a wreath to your wife. I'd like you to know that. I offered her my personal help. We're not stony-hearted in this place, you know. We were about to take up a collection for your wife and children. We've arranged a month's salary for you and bonus payment and quite a tidy sum. I have to check here with free tickets if you'd like to have a holiday with your family anywhere within the country. Also, I have your formal notice. No one, Mr. Rainbird, no one is sorrier about this than I am. I think it's ridiculous. It's not my decision. It came from higher up. It can't be helped. Mr. Rainbird, Godfrey, we'll give you the highest references, of course, for future employment. You understand that so much publicity has been attracted by the incident. Isn't publicity good? I need work. I've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. Versatile young man, good education, the highest references. The want ads column is full of jobs. Is there anything I can do to help? To save embarrassment, we've told the staff that you're off for a holiday. Have you told them I'm not coming back? Don't discuss it. You know how it is. Fair is fair. A month's salary. Fair is fair. A bonus. Fair is fair. Free travel. One hundred pounds between the Rainbird family and the wolf at
mechanic, no remittance car salesman, mail clerk, automotive electrician, boy or youth for hat factory, handyman, married couple for sheep run, experienced shiftsman for state coal mines, good reliable man for window cleaning, married tractor driver, heating engineer with ability, foresight, initiative, pipe fitters, man for Lulb Bay, tunnelers, insurance executive, sheet metal tradesman, chief clerk, jobbing compositor first class, somewhere within the area covered by this newspaper a man will read this advertisement to start himself on a new successful career. He will be a man with drive, enthusiasm, high in intelligence, and a determination to get to the higher income bracket. Rabbiter, experienced or man willing to learn. Program covers poisoning, trapping, light shooting. Experienced lounge bar steward would consider married couple with wife as waitress. Worker for general foliard, married man preferred. Three apprentices in bindery department, men for store, flour millers, Experienced cutters, elevator operator at hotel. Have you integrity, perseverance, enthusiasm? The job includes portering early morning teas, receiving late guests, daytime control of the lift. The hours are irregular. Have you done this kind of work before? I haven't. It helps to be well-spoken. We are against too much la-di-da talk, putting on of the style. We don't want any Lord Ha-Ha's working for us. Personal appearance is important. We've a lot of overseas visitors here. We used to have royalty, but now they go to the Superior up the road where they have private lavatories and baths. You have a wound on your cheek. Car accident? No. Well, yes. You don't like a man who's had his license endorsed. Oh, it's nothing like that. I can't drive. I think I've seen your face before. You're the bloke who died and came back to life. Yes, I am. Now, we have a humanitarian tradition here at the Pioneer. We've often given our man's job to someone who's, you know, uh, we've had a variety of good workers here. Uh, they may not have had much in the top story, but they learned to run the elevator, uh, to give good advice, and they've been decent, honest, well-spoken. We always say that something must be done for the handicapped. Therefore, because we do have this tradition of uh, helping the handicapped, those who may not have been born with the normal equipment, so to speak, I'm prepared to Take you on shift work, starting at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. No one can say that we do nothing for the handicapped. Mr. Collins, this is his wife speaking. I am afraid that Godfrey has found something else. One man and one woman, and one man and one woman to the
intensity we will get back to normal godfrey i'm going back to work for the doctor you could work at home i have an uncle who had a heart attack he gave up his job and stayed at home sharpening scissors and knives people always want scissors and knives but i'm not an invalid of course you're not but in a way it's not really fair for you to go back to work. Not fair? Who's talking of fairness? You have to give people a chance, Godfrey, a chance to live, to believe they're alive, that they're being pronounced alive is no mistake. We didn't dream what happened. You understand? It's only natural, only human for people that not want to be reminded. They might get so angry they would persecute you. They might even kill you. They might even kill you. Godfrey, don't you see that they want peace? I'll get a job. You stay home. Perhaps grow vegetables. It sounds cruel, but life's cruel. I couldn't help hearing. If it's me, I'm going north. I arranged it yesterday. I have no cause to stay. No cause. No cause. beginning to say their father is a grumpy old man. You seem to have the weight of the whole world on your shoulders. I wish we had no children. I wish we had no one but ourselves now. No house, or garden, or lawn, or view. We keep looking at the view, and the view keeps looking back at us. I am content to lie here in my deck chair while the sun shines. Don't be unrealistic, Godfrey. We got the bill for your coffin and funeral. But I didn't have a funeral. No, but all the arrangements were made. Arrangements? They dug my grave too, I suppose. You were dead. What happened to it when I came alive? They filled it in. I bought it though, what else could I do? It was the second to last family plot in the cemetery, a beautiful cemetery by the sea. I panicked all over the world. There's no room to die, let alone live. 
And my coffin. Perpetual undertakers have it. You mean it's waiting for me? What was I to do? wanting to know why you're being used and deciding whether it's good or bad. Simple as a dream, isn't it? This is our home, isn't it? This is not the place you found for Tina and Sonny, you and me, where yellow flowers grow in summer. Coastline and sea. Liberty. 
drink a carton of plugs, which is two together. Oh, crippley rainbird dies in the night. Wake up in a fright, woke up tight. Rainbird, rainbird, dead and gone. Got no money for living on. Sits on his bum till kingdom come. Beatrice dispelled her usual feeling of tiredness with two glasses of sherry at the lounge bar of the Pioneer. And she was looking forward to being at home with Godfrey and the children. And she was sure that at last summer had come and it did not matter how much it rained or how the sea on the ocean side pounded against the rocks and sent its spray flying as far as the graves in the cemetery. The yellow flowers would be out the warm flowers. They flared softly inside her as she waited in line for the bus. When she saw the police car outside their gate with the light in the roof throbbing and beating, she stared. Dazed, she walked up the path. 
culpable in law, but the incident has to be investigated and your child's environment looked into. I'm sorry to say there's been talk. Talk. What kind of gentleness does this man think he wants? Why can't he go out and rough it like the rest? The experience he's had might have ennobled another man stand ten feet tall in charity, but it's shrunken him until he's exchanged a life, a wife and family for pieces of electric plugs. A man who's had this experience could be of use to others in church work and social work. His reprieve could have been miraculous. He's had a second chance to walk on earth, a return to life that all would envy, but few are granted. And what does he do with this precious life but sit all day like a crippled man, a poor victim looking out the window at the sun shining on some unreal city? It's a crime that he can't go out and get a job and produce, do something for his adopted country. Who does he think he is? His family crumbling about him? His wife taken to drink? His children stone throwers who have set out on a path of murder? Beatrice looked about her at the group of men and women who made up the informal children's court, at the motherly and fatherly concern and rage showing in their faces. These were the guardians of the city and its people. Beatrice knew it was the beginning of the end of the robbery, the surrender of the hostages to the living. There seemed to be no objection or defense when a month later the Baldwins complained to the Child Welfare Department. What kind of home and upbringing, they asked, can be expected for little Tina Rainbird, who spends all her spare time sitting beside her father. Don't be afraid, Tina. Look down over the country and you'll see everything made small, just a fistful of snow for the mountains and the sea in a silver sugar bowl. I wish Daddy had come to say goodbye to He understands When he was a boy He was 
was sent away to when he lost his mother. Why is it lost and not there? It's time to go kiss. Cold face to cold face. Our children are being corrupted, alienated, claimed, and possessed by a crank who has spread the word that he died and returned to life when he knows what really happened. What really happened. There he is, luring all the children in the neighborhood to his home by his gifts of sweets and his fantastic stories and promises. rock bottom but there's fire below the rock isn't there Godfrey it's people throwing them what more sacrifice do they want they shook her head. The estrangement was complete. She knew it from Sonny's final welfare glance and Tina's goodbye when she boarded the plane to Lindley's. And from the first night, the stones were flung on the roof. Perhaps after all, they were thunderbolts or colliding planets. We can get the police complain. It will be the windows next. The idea of the windows broken. I like to have glass there between myself and the city. Especially now in winter. Yes, it is winter now, and tomorrow will the be the weekend again. Beatrice did not tell Godfrey where, for the past year, she spent her Sunday afternoons. But he knew. The children told him. That night, she cried out in her sleep. But he could not make out what she said and did not try to. He felt immensely weary, but for the first time since he woke from the dead, he was conscious of warmth flowing into his body. He sank into sleep as into a warm bath and did not hear the stones on the roof. The next morning, the sun was already hot against the window pane, searching to enter, to touch and reclaim his skin. He felt reluctant to share his new abundance of warmth and life. It belonged to him only. He stood complete once more, upright on the earth, his space secured.
it was not until late in the morning that he found Beatrice in her room. The newly sharpened knives by her side. It happened many years ago now, but people remember and will tell you if you ask. They will show you press clippings of Tina Rainbird, famous actress. They will mention with pride that Melbourne's town clerk is Sonny Rainbird. They will show you the Godfrey Rainbird Children's Ward of the hospital, donated by some who remember him from their childhood. If you happen to visit with an afternoon to spare, you might like to go to the grave of Godfrey and Beatrice Rainbird. The tourist for sure will tell you which bus to catch and give you the exact location of the grave. The biography includes a mixture of fact and fantasy about the life and death of the rainbows. And you may not know 
Which story to believe, but it does not matter, does it? The cemetery is beautiful in the summer. If you visit, you will discover the yellow and gold marigolds, nasturtiums. Snap dragons that Beatrice planted during her weekend visits to the grave.